Good morning, sixth graders. Today I'll be reading chapter nine, Parker Elias. Back when Grandpa was alive, he and Grams ran the lunch counter at the bus station. I can still picture the luncheonette sign, which always looked like elect the noun to me. I don't remember much about Grandpa, except that he used to tell me it was a $10 word, and I'd be able to read it just fine when I got older. We know how that worked out. Grams would stand me up in front of the candy counter, which seemed like it was a mile high, although it was just because I was small. She'd say, what'll it be, kiddo? And I could pick out whatever I wanted. In those days, I didn't mind being kiddo because she definitely knew my real name. This handsome fellow is my grandson, Parker, she'd announce whenever the regulars came by. You could tell by the way she boomed it out that she was totally thrilled by the idea. I wonder if she knows that the guy who drives her every morning is the same little kid she used to brag about to her customers. It's not her fault. When Grandpa died, she started forgetting a lot of stuff. But you'd think a grandson could be an exception to that, especially a grandson who's supposed to be her favorite person in the whole world. Grams insists that the reason she can't get her act together is she isn't a morning person. This is from a lady who gets up at 4 a.m. So we'll be halfway to the senior center before I look down and notice that her shoes don't match or that instead of her purse, she brought a half loaf of Wonder Bread. There are those red, yellow, and blue polka dots smiling up at me along with the name, which looks like Downer. Today, Mom's driving because Grams has her semi-annual conference with the social worker at the senior center. Mom calls it Meet the Teacher, since I guess it's a lot like parent conference at school. Speaking of which, she says to me, how's eighth grade going? I understand you're in a different kind of program this year. I almost reply, yeah, the unteachables. But that wouldn't be a good idea. The minute she got through with Grand's Meet the Teacher, she'd be stalking the middle school looking to meet my teacher. I picture my folks trying to hold a conversation with Ribbit, who never glances up from his crossword puzzle. Dad, especially, would have no patience for that. Fall is our busiest season on the farm, with so much harvesting still to do. So I tell her it's going to be fine, like always. She casts me a doubtful look like always, might not have been the best choice of words. Mom signs my report cards. She knows better than anyone like always, what like always probably means. I add, our teacher has a lot of experience. He started out teaching stegosaurus and pterodactyls before moving on to the unteachables. Dinosaurs had no problem being in a class with a guy who did crossword puzzles all day. Mom looks like she has more questions, but luckily, Graham is waiting outside her building. No mismatched clothes on or missing socks. No rubber gasket from the coffee maker on her wrist instead of her a medical alert bracelet. She's thrown a little, she's thrown a little to see me in the passenger seat instead of behind the wheel, so it takes some coaxing to get her into the truck. She has to sit on the hump between Mom and me since the pickup has no back seat. Of all the cars, you picked this one, she asks mom. You're crazy. It's just for a couple of minutes, my mom promises. Once we drop Parker at school, you'll have plenty of room. I'm Parker, I put in quickly, since Grands is looking around the car in confusion. She beams at me. Hiya, kiddo. Want breakfast? No time. We're coming up on my spot. Mom pulls up in front of the school, and I get out. She waves. Have fun. Yeah, right. Fun. That's the last word that comes to mind when I think of FCS 8. On the other hand, a sit down with Grams and a social worker won't be a party either. I'm probably getting the better deal. As the pickup roars off, I hear a crunching sound. A crushed Vuvuzela lies on the pavement, the plastic busted by the weight of the truck. It seems like there are more of them around every day as we get closer to Spirit Week. And these are just leftovers from last year. 
The word is that Principal Vargas just placed this giant order of new ones for 2019. They're going to be bright yellow, our school color, and say, go, go, golden eagles on the side. It doesn't make much sense to me that you can get a detention for chewing gum, but blasting away on a horn as loud as an air raid siren is considered school spirit. Instead of being late like most other mornings, I've got the opposite problem. I'm early. The buses haven't started arriving yet. I wander down to room 117, but nobody's there. The kids of SCS 8 dribble in 10 seconds before the late bell, and at that time, we're usually ahead of Mr. Kermit. The only signs of life are coming from the room next door, 115. Ms. Fountain, in her classroom, is in her classroom rearranging the Velcro smiley faces on her job boards. There's always a Hershey's kiss sitting in the middle of each desk. You know what Mr. Kermit gives us every morning? Nothing if you don't count the dirty looks. She spots me standing there in the doorway. Good morning, Parker. You're early today. Come have a kiss. I stare at her for a long time before I realize she's talking about the candy. Uh, thanks. The chocolate is sweet in my mouth. When you spend all your time in SCS 8, you almost forget there's another way to live. My eyes find the lizard terrarium. Hey, I say suddenly, Vladimir's back. She beams. Mr. Kermit found him for me. Really? That doesn't sound like the ribbit. I know. The one I would have given anybody the skin off a... The one who wouldn't give anybody the skin off a grape. Suddenly, I experience an almost irresistible desire to drop to the floor and sit cross-legged on the taped circle. I know Miss Fountain's teaching style is too babyish for our age, but circle time that day might have been the most comfortable I've ever felt in middle school. When you're in that circle, nobody's going to ask you to read something that's written in unbreakable code. Maybe Aldo can't come up with any nice thing to say, but... I'm willing to go with it. If it means no reading, I'll even say nice things about Elaine. A couple of the seventh graders show up, and there's an emotional reunion with Vladimir. I join in for a while, but eventually one of them notices I'm there. You're not in this class, he comments meaningfully. That's right, I reflect with a sigh. I'm not. I shoulder my backpack and head next door even though it's still early. Kiana crouches in the hall outside SCS 8, a look of intense concentration on her face. What's going on, I ask. Shh, she presses a finger to her lips and points inside the classroom. Mr. Kermit is talking, and at first I think he's chewing someone out. His voice is a lot sharper than his usual half-sleepy drone. Then I hear the reply, tinny and very close. It's coming from the intercom right on the other side of the door, Principal Vargas. I think you'd be happy about this, Zachary, the principal is saying. It's no secret that the sound of those vuvuzelas drives you over the edge. Zachary, Mr. Kermit's name is Zachary. That's not the point, our teacher replies. You've already separated my class from everybody else in the building. Maybe you have your reasons for that but you can't exclude them from the activities for Spirit Week. That's punishing them for something they haven't done yet. You loathe Spirit Week, Mrs. Vargas accuses. We're not talking about me. We're talking about my students. As happy as I'd be to ignore the whole thing, I'm their, other, their only teacher. Who's going to stick up for them if I don't? Besides me, Kiana pumps a fist and whispers, go rib it. Think of who we're talking about, the principal insists. Think of the disruption they're capable of. Now picture them with vuvuzelas in their hands. Let that be my problem, Mr. Kurt Kermit says stubbornly. It's not going to be anybody's problem, Mrs. Vargas insists. It's a done deal, Zachary. Your kids are out. We hear a click as the office breaks the connection. On the other side of the do door, Mr. Kermit mutters something I can't make out. Did you hear that, Kiana breathes? Mr. Kermit cares about us. I didn't hear anything about caring, I retort. That was all about Vuvuzelas, which we're not getting anyway. 
Weren't you paying attention? He fought for us. I can't figure him out, I complained. He hates Vuvuzelas. Why would he want us to have them? So he can kill whoever blows one? She throws up her hands in exasperation. Don't you see? It's not about the noisemakers. It's about fairness. That doesn't make much sense to me. If life was fair, there would be no such thing as the unteachables in the first place. And that's the end of chapter nine, you guys. Thanks. Have a great day.